Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Natco Pharma Limited Q3 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Nuama Wealth. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kunal Vandaria from Nuwama Wealth. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vivian, and good morning, everyone. On behalf of Nuwama Institutional Securities, I welcome you all for Natco Pharma's Q3 FY23 earnings call. So with us today, we have Natco Pharma's senior management team, represented by Mr. Rajiv Nandapaneni, Director and Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Rajesh Chabian, Executive Vice President, Crop Health Science. Over to you, Rajesh, for opening remarks. Thank you, Kunal. Uh, good morning and welcome everyone to NATCO's conference call discussing our earning results for the third quarter of FI23. During this call, we may be making certain forward-looking statements or statements about future events, and anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. I would like to state that the material of the call, except for the participant questions, property of NATCO, cannot be recorded or broadcast without NATCO's express written permission. We'll begin with the results uh, highlights and followed by an interactive Q&A session. So again, we hope we have received our financials <clears throat> and the press release that was sent earlier. It's also available on our website. NATCO recorded consolidated total revenue of 513.3 crores for the third quarter ended 31st December 2022, as against 590.7 crores for the same period last year that had a one-time licensing fee revenue. Net profit for the period on a consolidated basis was 62.3 crores, <clears throat> as against 80.4 crores same period last year. For the nine months ending December 31st, 22, the company actually recorded a total revenue of 1884.8 crores as against 14.14 crores same period last year so it's reflecting almost 31.5% growth and on the net side the company recorded 439.5 crores as against 220.5 crores reflecting almost 100% improvement in fact on the segmental revenue split this has already been shared with you We'll pause here and uh, we'll take questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may kindly press star one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Taran Agarwal from Old Bridge Capital. Kindly proceed. Hi, good morning. A uh, couple of questions from me. One on the employee cost, I believe there's a 29 crore uh, one-time VRS. Um, is, is this one-time? And if so, X the VRS, the employee cost ends up being 77 crores uh, for the quarter, uh, which is materially lower than the previous quarters. Um, the VRS, I have to check that number currently. Give me a moment, okay? let me just check. Okay, okay. Um, I'll just uh, take my second question and then. Uh, how should we look at uh, accretion in the agrochemical business from your own? I think, uh, let, me ask, let me answer the VRS. I think that is for the year that charge has happened. In this particular quarter doesn't reflect that 27 crore charge from what I understand. And uh, so the consistent salary is what, what's been shown in this quarter. Okay, yes. Oh. 
And uh, the second question is, how is uh, the agro division? Agro division is doing very well. Uh, even though it's off season, we, we could we couldn't launch because the court uh, uh, clearance took took us till October. So I think we we had a good a reasonable start. I think uh, we had about little less than 10 crores of revenue in that division. I think uh, we feel that it should do very well. I think this quarter in the January to March quarter, and of course the coming Kharif will do extremely well. And our thinking is that we should do about 150 to 200 crores in division, uh, which is as so far has not contributed any revenue. So this will happen this year in the next 12 months, and I, and I, I think everything looks good. So Rajiv, I mean, um, in terms of your conversations with 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 your B2B customers and your uh, 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 the way you must have formed up your channel, I mean, all 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 of that is in place, correct? I think P2B customers are all lined up, and I believe I think P2B customers will not will make up probably 25 to 30 percent of sale. I think 65 to 70 percent of sale will be our direct label, our own label. And the real value is in your own label, Karan, not selling to P2B customers. And I think we're seeing good traction. We have launched all the combinations, and some of the combinations we are the only uh, product other than the innovators. So I think we're in a very good space, and uh, and I'm very excited. I think this quarter you will will see some uptake because of the UP sugar season. I think, and then of course the curry in the next quarter. So as you know, in agro, I think a lot of the sale happens uh, in the curry season. So a lot of the sale will get reflected in this quarter and the next quarter. I think it will be lumpy in Q4 and Q1 of next year. So I think that's, that's where where things are going. Thank you. Thanks. All the best, guys. Thanks. Next caller. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star 1. The next question is from the line of Chetan Doshi from Tulsi Capital. Kindly proceed. Uh, see, at least if you see last uh, five years of uh, uh, revenue from pharma, uh, there is no uh, big growth coming in except for one-time sale in the current year first quarter. And uh, second, uh, our margins are getting suppressed year on year, if you see. Now, this development of uh, pesticide is uh, definitely a, a good idea, but that is how the company is looking for uh, making up the losses or uh, they are planning to have some new development going on in pharma also where high margin business uh, they are expecting. Okay, so to answer your question, see, if you look at our earnings five years ago, a lot of it used to come from one or two products. It used to come from Tamiflu and a little bit from Glatromer and it used to come from Fuel and Doxorubicin. Practically, uh, all the earnings of those three products have declined dramatically. I'm, I think Sultamivir has completely vanished. Uh, Doxorubicin has come down by 85 to 90 percent. So you look at, let's say, our balance sheet about four or five years ago, almost 40 to 50 percent used to come from these, uh, you know, big one-time products. So we actually had to redo the model completely. So essentially what we did is we have built subs in Brazil. We have, uh, we have uh, you know, have a sub in Canada. We have built our ROW business. We started the agro business. So essentially, if you look at that business, we have actually – build back the same business that we had about five years ago with a more steady state revenue. And on top of that, we have rev limit. So I think it's a very dramatic transformation. I think in terms of what, what we have done in terms of building a more sustainable, wider business. So when you build a sustainable, wider business with multiple geographies which don't have that extra super normal profits, obviously the margins are going to be low and there's, there's no way around it. And if you look at this particular quarter, for example, rev limit is very, there's no very little rev limit, but still it's a very steady state revenue that we have. And the revenues are equal to what we have, let's say, made about three, four years ago when we had all the one times. This is without any one times. So, but you need to understand something, okay? I, I, I mean, I, I say this all the time, but I'll repeat it one more time. The growth in this business doesn't happen from base. The growth in this business happens from your ex, your super your super extraordinary findings. I I challenge you on this on any pharma company that you could look at any company's balance sheet. Your base business gives you that minimum margin which pays the bills and you get normal profit. If you want to get growth, you want to get something special. You need to have something interesting. 
And that interesting product is what delivers that bump in the earnings. Without that, you'll never have steady uh, growth in earnings or extra, extra profits. That's the nature of the business because of the competition that is there in this business. Because what has happened is, if you look at a product where there are multiple competitors, there's not too much margin to be made uh, in a lot of our key markets, especially the US or even our export business. That's the structure of the business and in a way, I think street has to get used to it. And it is more so pronounced in our balance sheet compared to other people, but more or less that's the structure of the business. And this is, it's, it's, it's across the sector, in my personal opinion. Okay. So, so in, in, in pharma sector, you are not looking for any big growth coming in next uh, two to three years? I'm not saying there's no growth. I, I think you didn't understand what I'm trying to say. I think what I'm trying to say, you will get growth from your base business and you'll get growth from the filings for which you have where you have a niche complex filing where you have an upset. And these will drive the earnings is what I'm saying. If you want earning growth, it will come from that. Not necessarily, base business cannot contribute for all the growth. It will come from the niche limited competition filings. So we are planning to get into some specific uh, areas where we can look for uh, good volumes and margins both. So some development is going on on that subject. No, what, what I'm trying to tell you is, uh, I'm telling the exact opposite. What I'm saying is that you will get business through diversification and multiple countries that will contribute to some percentage of your growth. But the real growth will come from when you do the niche and the small, uh, what you call, high value, small volume products. That's where the real value will come from. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, you know, we have a lot of para filings and I think we are publicly disclosed, we are trying to do, uh, you know, some couple of FTFs over and above what we already have. And if we deliver like another three, four FTFs, then, you know, we, this whole decade is set. I think our whole concentration is doing more niche, hard to do generics, where, where we see a lot of value while we build our base business by expanding our job. And um, one last question. Is there any other questions? Thank you. One last question, please. Okay, okay, uh, okay, fine. okay fine. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving the opportunity. In this pesticide business, you have written in the presentation is biopesticides. You mean to say that is biodegradable product? No, I think that is specifically referring to a particular product. Uh, uh, so we have a product called uh, Fur Pink Bullworm, which is a pheromone. So pheromone is, uh, it interferes with the mating of, it's a, it's a naturally occurring product, which interferes with the mating of the insects. Because it interferes with the mating of the in, uh, uh, insects, it reduces uh, the, uh, the the eggs that are laid on the plant, so therefore there will be less infestation on the plant. So specifically referring to that particular product. So the 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 core product which is driving the earnings, which is chlorantriphol, is not a biopesticide. It is a regular regular pesticide. I think the flavor of the presentation was trying to tell you that in addition to this, we're also working on products which are bio uh, in nature. And then Central Insecticide Board actually categorizes. Uh, the pheromone under the biopesticide. So that's why. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Can you proceed? Hi. Uh, thanks, uh, Rajiv. Uh, now uh, on uh, Revlimid, uh, how should we expect the next couple of quarters? We should uh, we should start seeing our profit share booking from next from Q4 into Q through Q1 like it happened last time? Yes, absolutely correct. Nathan. So I think Q4 and Q1 will uh, is our expectation and most of the profit share will be booked. We'll, uh, we already shipped the quantity for our Q1. So I think uh, so we'll have a, a very good Q1 and Q4 and have a very good year. Uh, so um, our expectation is that this year, I think we should overall as a company, I think we, uh, we should do about 2,700 to 2,800 first in top line. And uh, this year's fat also should be, I think, closer to 700 crores this year. I think that's our expectation. That's probably be our highest uh, revenue and highest fat in the history of the company. I think, uh, and I think a lot of it will be helped by the development uh, that we're going to get in this particular quarter. 
you said uh, 1,700 crores of profit and about, uh, this is for 24 you meant, right? 23, 23. 23 March. 23 March. Yeah. 23 March. Yeah. Okay. And uh, lastly, on uh, on on the on the agrochem business uh, beyond uh, CTPR, how should we think about this business? Uh, you know, in terms of launches and all incrementally going forward. I think uh, Nitin, CTPR is going to be the base of the business. I think CTPR will set up the business, uh, and this will be the the anchor that will allow us to build a larger portfolio. CTPR, its combinations itself, I think there's a lot of scope in the next two years to build up uh, uh, the business. We have other products in pipeline, and uh, we will uh, launch them uh, over the next period of next few years. And uh, some of them involve patent litigation as well. So I think to give you a timeline on what products and all, I think we'll disclose that over a period of uh, time. But I think we are very uh, excited about this possibility, and, uh, and I think, uh, I think it, it has a lot of value. And do you have a Rajiv a sense of on the where the size of the business could be in the next three to five years overall agricultural piece for you? I think next twelve months I, I think I, I've stated I think our expectation is that this business will do about one fifty to two hundred crores. Over a period of time I believe that this business can grow to about four hundred to five hundred crores, uh, with mostly branded India business driving it and eventually the export also picking up. So I think that's our expectation of this business in the next few years. But I think to start with, I think this is the number that we're working with. Thank you. Thank you. Participants are requested to restrict your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Venkat from Three Sigma Financial. Kindly proceed. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Mr. Rajiv, uh, you know, we have been seeing that, you know, competitors are able to perform better in the domestic market from the growth point of view. Uh, while, while we are seeing challenges uh, in growth, is the problem with pricing or uh, the sales, you know, so what is actually limiting our growth compared to our competitors? And more so in oncology and uh, other divisions where we have, where we historically had a great leadership position, actually. Um. Domestic, I think uh, it's always been a challenge for us because we have always done a limited segment. I think we've always done a niche segment. I think that was a challenge. Uh, because we did a niche segment, I think our growth has been limited. I think now we've expanded the portfolio. Now we're covering GPs, we're doing cardio, we're doing diabetes, which we've not done in the past. So I think we launched this division and we have expanded our field force. The benefit of that, we'll see in the next few years. Um, Onco has been a lot of competition. I think once you are more spread out in multiple divisions, then the impact of a particular segment and pricing of a particular segment will not uh, you know, impact the balance sheet as much. And we're also looking for an acquisition market. I think it will take some time. I think we're working on different ac acquisitions, which allows us better reach and a more uh, deeper portfolio. We have cash in the books. I mean, you know, we have almost 1,030 crores of cash in the books. And we have very little debt, except for working capital debt, we don't have any debt at all. So, I mean, and we're getting more cash coming forward the next year. So, I think we'll find something to plug the gap. And I think it is going to be a combination of expanding field force and an acquisition which will drive growth in that business. Okay? Yeah. So, 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 you know, uh, the other question I wanted to have is, uh, I'm sure you must be doing a competitive analysis on the sales effectiveness. So, uh, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, periodic reviews and the right tooling is being provided for the uh, sales uh, representatives, you know, in the absence of that, the effectiveness uh, may not be really so much actually because, you know, for a comparable size company also, we are seeing better uh, returns, uh, or better sales, you know, from other companies. I just wanted to make a comment, you know, not expecting any response from you, but uh, this is an observation that I have made actually. Well, I, I think we could, we, we could have done much better. I think I, I don't, I generally don't run away from the question, so I'll answer it directly. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I think we have, we could have done much better. And I think, but Venkat, you need to structurally also understand our, we are, we do domestic. It's not that we don't do domestic, but our strength is the regulated market. If you look at our facilities and all, you know, uh, you know, we specialize in doing patent litigation abroad. We specialize in doing hard to do generics. When you do a hard to do generic, typically these are all niche, you know, peptide products where the value of proposition is not so big in India. It is big outside India. 
and uh, if you look at our balance sheet, you know, uh, you know, most most of our revenue comes out of US, you know, and uh, regulated markets. So it's a it's a challenge, uh, you know, when you do well in that, then sometimes you know you, you miss this. I think in in hindsight, I wish we could have done more things in India, but we, I think we're fixing it. See, think it. I the way I look at this business is, I think we need to build a more diversified business. I think part of that challenge is we want to build this organically. It takes time. It doesn't happen over a period of time. I mean, for example, the agro initiative, we've taken it about three years. Now we're, we're seeing uh, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. We believe that that business is going to increase by 150 to 200 crores. I think we're trying, you know, organically to build these businesses. But again, I like to build businesses with high, you know, value and, you know, uh, and high margin and bring something special to the table compared to, you know, uh, as a company, culturally, I think we've never done well selling a commodity. We always do well selling something niche or something first in the country type of portfolio. It's a different DNA. I mean, I don't want you to compare us. We're not apples to apples comparison with our competitors. But I think, for example, we have done extremely well in the regulated market. And, you know, and uh, we are able to deliver these niche filings all the time. So I think you have to look at the success at a, at a larger uh, context. Thank you. But one question is, you know, most of the uh, rather U.S. has become very competitive market, and when when I look at the cinema landscape, the people are focusing on domestic market, and that's why things were centered around domestic. Venkat sir, we are not able to hear you clearly. I I understand. Yes. <laughs> I understood the question, Venkat. But I'll tell you, I'm I'm exactly doing the opposite of what the industry is doing. So we are making money in U.S. when nobody is making money in the U.S. And the people are making money in India. We're not making as much money as in India. So I think even in the U.S. market, I think it's a, it just, it's a, it's a the, the thought has been flawed too many times. I think there is ways of making money in, in the U.S., but you need to have a very clear strategy on how to make money. And you cannot make money by doing a commodity. I'll tell you, for example, just for the sake of explanation for all the benefit of the callers today. You could never make money in auto starting in the U.S. because there will be so many compar comparators on that generic, and they'll never make money as a supplier of auto starting in the U.S. But if you have a brand of auto starting in the U.S., in India, you'll actually make a lot of money because you have a reasonably well-priced product. So what works in India, what works in the U.S. are completely different. So to succeed in the U.S., you cannot be trying to sell auto in what model you have in India. You can't replicate that model in the U.S. You want to do something niche something which has a, a difficult patent challenge, first more advantage or difficult chemistry. That's where you make money, which is what we are good at. So to say that U.S. is a bad market and all, U.S. is bad. I mean, that matter, even India market is also bad in a lot of the segments. It's, you have to find that sweet spot. And I think that's where the value is. And I think, I think that's what you need to judge a company on, rather than trying to, I mean, any business is bad if you look at it at a very macro level, but there are always sweet spots that you need to find. That's where the smartness is, isn't it? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the explanation. Right. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Kindly proceed. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, so the three questions, uh, first one in U.S., you mentioned business is profitable, no doubt. You are into niches, no doubt. But, I mean, uh, you know, uh, post Copaxon and Revlimid, we haven't heard, uh, you know, the next level of uh, products that your R&D team has been delivering in the past. So how how is the next five years looking in terms of, you know, uh, product approval, uh, uh, development work going on, filing expected, if you could just give some color there. I mean, we have other paracore filings. I think we publicly disclosed them. And I think uh, some of them, like cartelism, we have heard to two, sir. Sorry, I'm sorry? Sir. I, I was just saying as exciting as the tour you have delivered in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah fair enough. Okay. See, what a jackpot, uh, yeah. I think we have done other filings, Prakash. I, again, I'm not at liberty to disclose at this time uh, what other filings we have. I think we have done a few other filings in this financial year. Hopefully, we are FTF on this. I think once we get a confirmation on that, we'll speak about it. I think we have as exciting products as uh, Revlimit coming up in the next by end of this decade. And in due course, we'll reveal this pipeline. And, and I think I'm very bullish about this business. And there are enough niches that you can exploit. And you need to get like two or three of these ideas right for, for the, to take care of your earnings till the end of the decade. 
So I am very confident and Prakash, in my personal view, I think we will disclose uh, in, in due course uh, and, uh, and I, I think very confident that we will be able to deliver. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. And finally on India business, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned that we are also looking at m and but I mean 2022, if you look at calendar year, that was the most busiest year in terms of m and be it derma acquisitions, you know, licensing of cardiovascular, uh, you know, uh, products like Sacubitrol. Uh, did you see these assets? Were you considering them or you are looking at separately different uh, kind of uh, acquisition? Some color will help. No assets, Prakash. I think a general comment is that the valuations of domestic assets have gone up dramatically because of uh, the nature of the, uh, you know, the, the, the atmosphere at this time, right? I mean, in terms of the uh, general, uh, you know, excitement in that asset. But there are a lot of assets coming, Prakash, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to consummate some deal in 2023. I know we missed an asset in 22. We could only do one acquisition, which was a front end in the U.S., that was the only acquisition we could close. Uh, but otherwise, we couldn't. Uh, we tried very hard. I think we looked at different assets. Unfortunately, we uh, we couldn't close. But but there is enough traction in the business. I think we believe that uh, you know we'll be able to close something. Uh, there's a lot of assets that are there, and people are re redoing their portfolio. So there's a lot of opportunities. So um, I think we'll be able to hopefully strike something in 23. Okay, but with a similar focus of higher margin and low field force, uh, will that the focus continue? I think that's, or the idea, uh, Prakash. I think, uh, that's what we are trying to do. And again, also a fair return on capital, Prakash, which is the most important thing, right? So again, you don't want to bid something so high that you, you don't make any money at all. So I think you need to have, uh, just because everybody is doing it, I don't want to do a bad deal, right? I mean, nobody wants to do a bad deal. No, it's nobody just that we're doing a bad deal, right? So yeah, I no, think no, we'll, no. we'll find something. I'm, I'm confident. You just have to be patient. You have to wait. Yeah. Sometimes, see, I am not under pressure in, in that sense, right? Because we have steady earnings coming going forward because of the, the steady cash flow in the, the portfolio that we have. And we have enough cash on the books. It's not for lack of money, right? So it's, it's just the right opportunity. Just wait and you'll get the right one. Yeah. You'll do the same thing. No, totally understand that, but it's just that the India business, both on Onco and uh, you know the HEPC is uh, declining quite a bit now, stabilized, but still, I mean, growth is clearly missing in your domestic portfolio. I think it can be fixed. I'm not worried about it, but we'll fix it. I think we have the resources to fix it. We have the cash to fix it. We have the strategy to fix it. So. Okay. I, you just have to be patient, my friend. That's all I can say. Uh, you know, that's the only answer I can give. Uh, you know, we will do the right deal at the right price so that, and we'll bring the right value for our shareholders. And, right. Uh, sometimes you should not just get caught up in the frenzy, right? And then, then you do a bad deal and, you know, it affects everyone, right? So I think you just have to do it at the right time. I think I, okay. just be that's all I can say. But I'm working on it here. I think it's a very strategic uh, asset. And I think... As the gentleman said, I think we are trying to redo the business in a way that our dependence on the U.S. also reduces. Uh, right now, we have business is pivoted very heavily towards U.S. And I think as we become a bigger company, I think it's important that we diversify away from U.S. I mean, the agro initiative is part of that. And also the acquisition of domestic asset is also part of that. So as of now, if you look at the balance sheet, you know, uh, you know, we'll probably do 400 crores of domestic out of 2,700 crores of red top line. So... Uh, domestic is like 15 or you know whatever that number is yeah 15 to 16 percent of the top line so like coming forward next year hopefully we'll be able to bring that up to because of the agro revenue we can bring that up to uh 20 25 percent in the long run i think we're objectively thinking that we should make this business about 30 to 35 percent which is more or less consistent with our larger peers but that transformation Prakash, will take time it can't happen overnight because we are yeah oh, God, God. Pivoted towards the u.s and doing niches to transform yourself to something else, it takes that. It takes a five to seven year cycle. It doesn't. You can't change your earnings tomorrow because you, you know, because you want to. Right? It takes a process. You just have to change yourself. Yeah? Okay. And just last quick one on uh, Revlimate. Uh, so, uh, it would be fair to understand with you know market share increasing, the delta of your revenues will increase, or it would get uh, offset by the 
incremental competition, little bit price uh, declines, etc. Uh, for next year, how I don't want to speak about it, uh, Prakash, because I don't really know. We go know in the Q4 and Q1. I think we'll, I, I'll probably uh, give you more ideas in the coming quarter uh, when we do the Q4 earnings. And uh, as of now, I don't want to guess anything, but I think it should do well. I think our expectations that it should do well. Uh, we will. Uh, I think we'll speak more about it during the next quarter. Yeah. And this agro 150 odd crores is for 24 or 25? I mean, revenue expectation? I think the next 12 months. So, a lot of the sale of agro, again, this is another very lumpy business. It happens in Q4 and Q1. Okay. And a little bit in Q2. So, most of the sale will happen between Q4 and Q1. I think Q1 will be the, the biggest quarter for, for that business. Okay. So, this calendar year basically? Yeah. So when I'm saying 12 months, I assume, see, problem is 12 months would include one quarter from the previous year and uh, and one quarter from the next year, right? And then you have two kind of easy quarters, right? Because of the way the business is. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have any export business to bring consistency in revenue. So it's primarily driven by India right now. So the lumpiness will continue, Prakash. Our Q4 and Q1 will always be strong for two reasons. One, because of development and because of agro. And then the other two quarters will be a little slower because those two are missing. So that's how the balance sheet is going to be. And, and the way I see it, it's going to be like this for the next few years. Okay, lovely. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, Prakash. Thanks. Next, please. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from SIMPL. Kindly proceed. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, Nikhil. Please go yeah, ahead. Hi, uh, Rajiv. I have three questions. One is, uh, so you, uh, in a continuation to the previous participant question, uh, when you said that uh, our uh, FI23 guidance is 2700 to 3000 crores on top line and 700 crores on bat, and if I just adjust for last year that inventory write off and all, uh, so what, is, what are you building in terms of pricing for March 23 when you say 700 crore? So is it like a significant price erosion or is it like a smaller volume offtake in March quarter and a larger offtake in Q1? I think that's my expectation, uh, Nitin. That's our expectation. I don't know that the quarter and I think, but you know, this is what, I mean, I'm just making an estimate based on uh, uh, how the earnings are going to be, but that's our expectation. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, secondly, uh, one of the competitors in on the AgroCam side uh, had mentioned that uh, the patents for the product are valid till 27. So this should remain a limited competition uh, uh, market. And we had also mentioned in previous calls that we are open to do B2B business. And uh, what we see is that there are a lot of people who have submitted their files for uh, to the government for uh, uh, approval. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, how should we understand? So, should it remain a two-three player market, or would we be open to more licensing and allow competition? Because, in a way, if we allow competition by B two B, we are killing our own margins in this product. So, like how that. will it? Uh, this is not like that. domestic market doesn't work like that. Nikhil. I think. Okay, let me answer your question. There are pa patents which are there till 2025. Okay, and uh, and I think we litigated and we won. Okay, that's the first thing. And there are very few people who have litigated and won. And you're right that there are only about two, three suppliers in the market right now, right? Therefore, in that sense, it's a limited supplier market. So that, that is where the value is coming from. Uh, typically what happens is these two, three competitors, including us, will have our own brand, which we sell, and we'll get certain amount of market share. And certain percentage of the market which cannot be serviced by you, give it on P2B basis. But P2B value also remains with you because you are selling the technical or the formulation to that person. So uh, so it is, doesn't destroy value because some people are strong in certain markets, some people are not strong in certain markets. So it is it is a fairly uh, you know well set model. I think everybody does that. I think you do a little bit yourself and you give some to third party. That's a structure of business. This happens in domestic also, uh, where, you know, even, uh, you know, what you call even domestic formulation in pharma, also, yeah. the same thing happens. Do three. There'll be some, uh, some companies are very strong regionally. There's some companies which are strong in certain geographies or certain segments of doctors. So it doesn't destroy value as long as a limited number of suppliers. And the number of suppliers are limited because of the patent case. So 
uh, I don't agree with the with the characterization that it will it will hurt you completely. It does hurt you a little bit, but on a net net basis, you always gain because of the superior access you get. So net net on a ROC basis, if we look at the whole uh, product as a profile of B two B and uh, own product basis, would you say that the ROC profile of this business will remain in a twenty five thirty percent range, or would you be similar to a domestic market kind of ROC profile? Because it's a portfolio approach we have taken, right? So in a way, we are defining the uh, price. It will be fairly profitable. How much money you will make? Uh, I and mean, I think we can. I'm expecting about twenty twenty five percent margin. I think that's what I'm expecting. But uh, net margin after expenses after everything on a gross sale of hundred rupees, we're expecting about twenty five thirty rupees. But see, let's see how it looks. Yeah. So far, looks good. We have some high cost inventory that we need to clear. But I think when it's just done, yes, I think that sort of margin is very reasonable. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And last question on the subsidiaries. Now, for last four quarters, the subsidiaries are at a run rate of 80 crores uh, sequentially, and this is to some extent supported by Revlimid uh, tenders in Canada. Uh, do you see that this uh, uh, run rate can be impacted when the new tenders will come in, or when does the new tender in Canada come in, or? Any idea if you can provide? Uh, come early, and some tenders are for two years or on. So it depends on. I I don't know exactly which tender is when, but it will hold up. See if you look at our earnings also. Uh, see, there's a netting off effect that is there, but actual subsidiary revenue is 169 crores this quarter. So and you look at our PAT as well. Nearly 40% of the PAT is coming from the subsidiary. So yeah, just, and it kind of shows what we're trying to do is to diversify our revenue and diversify our geographies. So um, to answer your question, it's a fairly steady net revenue, and I think uh, uh, and and I think it will hold up for a little bit, but not for long. But again, you need to come up with some other product which can offset the loss that you have. But subsidiaries itself are contributing a significant part of our sales. Yeah. Sure, I'll come back in the queue. Thanks. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of. Arun Malhotra from Cap Grow Capital, can you proceed? Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Wanted to ask, we have mentioned that Para Four Eleven products have been approved. What is the size of this opportunity for these eleven and for the nineteen products we are, which are still in litigation? Nineteen products are there in litigation. Eleven products are approved. I don't know. No, what what we said in the presentation that when nineteen para fours are in the pipeline, like this is as of March thirty first, twenty twenty two, right? So we usually uh, consolidate and update once in a year, uh, not necessarily quarterly. Um, and uh, the market size varies depending on the product. There are. Uh, Some which is billion dollar uh, opportunities, some are in the. Because see, just because you do a para four doesn't mean it has value, my friend. Because sometimes there are joint filers. So let's say there are eight filers and everybody is doing a para four, then really it doesn't really have much value. I think para four is it's just an indication that you're challenging your patent, but doesn't necessarily mean you'll make a. Just because you're doing a para four doesn't mean that you'll make a money on that particular product because if there are a lot of competitors, it doesn't really matter, right? So what you need to do is judge the filing by the product. I mean. Uh, The product has limited competition, then it has value. So I think that's how we have to look at it. And 11 approved. What does that indicate? Any opportunity size where we could have some color? Uh, I think we have sp- the presentation has uh, the products where we are sole FTF and le- uh, and much shared FTF. Yeah. I think we can. Uh, I mean, it's there in the presentation. I think, uh, for example, just to give a flavor, I'll give an. I can't recollect all of them on top of my head, but for example, capitalism and on one strength we are shared FTF, but on one strength we are the sole FTF. On both strength and uh, suspension uh, we are the sole FTF. Uh, so it's you know it's it's a, every product has its own sort of uh, you know dynamics. So we I mean uh, this is not the right time to go over you know by product by product, but broadly I think that's how it works. Yeah. Just want to add one point here just to clarify your question. See, we have um, roughly around like 26 commercial uh, products in the U.S. Right? Of that, what we are uh, suggesting in the presentation is about 11 of them are true. So that means some of them are launched, and para fours are generally a higher value because limited competition and uh, possibly first to five. 
So that, that's what we're trying to indicate. You know, the well, I think we'll give more clarity in the presentation next time where we believe there's limited competition which are shared. I think that will give better color to the pipeline. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be helpful for us in estimating the future revenue. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Yeah, thank you. I think we may clarify that in the presentation. I think Rajesh, I think, will address that in the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Next question, sure. please. And yeah, yeah. Second is, can you throw some light on current rev limit pricing uh, scenario in the US? I I don't want to talk about it uh, at this time. I think uh, we will speak about it. I think uh, in the coming quarter, I, uh, and at least we'll have a better idea on what things are. Generally, we don't give up your commercial strategy, and uh, we don't speak That's about not that. our strategy. I'm saying how the prices in the industry are, how the prices are. I I can't answer that question, my friend. I'm sorry, I can't answer. All right. Uh, thank you, thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul from Investor. Can you proceed? Excuse me, Rahul? Yeah, I'm online. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we are. Can you proceed? Uh, my question is, uh, oh, what about the management of the overall profitability because we are losing something in this quarter. So are we going to make up it completely in the Q4 or uh, still there will be some uh, uh, pretty downfall in the profit? I think uh, I've answered this question earlier, so I think I'll repeat that question. I think the way our nature of our business is, like Q4 and Q1 will be lumpy. And Q2 and Q3 will be, uh, you know, uh, you know, on the lower side. It's, we are look at the earnings at a, an, on an annual basis, and that's how we are look at it. And it's going to be like this going forward as well, because agro is also going to significantly contribute to the base business. And a lot of the sale comes from Karif and little bit in Rabi. So that's the nature of the business. And I think uh, if you look at the nine months earnings, I'll, uh, I think the press release can address that. Uh, our nine months earnings, we did about. 1,884 crores of revenue, and we have a profit of 442 crores. So I think uh, we've given, given a guidance that you know going forward, uh, we'll, we'll we'll do about 2,700 uh, based on how development goes, and uh, and in a, pro a pack which is probably closer to 700, a little less than 700 in that case. So my question, what we're implying is only one, one point. Huh? Yeah. Sorry, I have only I have only one doubt there. Uh, uh, see, for like, I, I understand your business because uh, I have been investing from last 24 months in your sister company. So my my thing is, are we going to uh, pull the losses of other quarters into this so that this is going to be subsidized? I didn't understand Can't your question, my friend. I'm not able to understand. No, no, no. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't hear it at all. I didn't. Can you say that one more? Could you rephrase that question, please? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, uh, the quarter of uh, Q4, I understand it will be pretty slow, but at the same time, we, the value of that particular quarter could, should not get dosed up because of the previous two quarters, right? Previous, I, I don't understand your question. For example, for example my Q2 didn't do well, my Q3 didn't do well, means there will be a lot of pressure on Q4, right? So it should not uh, depreciate my Q4. Are there any kind of plan for that? That's what I'm asking. I think Q4, I think the guidance addresses that question. No, I think our expectation is that, mm -hmm. that it, it will do well, and I think that's our expectation. Okay, okay. thank okay. you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Next. The next question is from the line of Yoganj Jaswani from Mittal Analytics. Can we proceed? Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, uh, so, uh, a lot of participants have asked you on CTPR. So just a few more follow-ups on it. So in CTPR, if you see uh, the other companies have also come in and they have also come in with 20-25% uh, discount to the pricing. And uh, I think Best Agro is one which is very upbeat about their CTPR launch. So given the market already has 2-3 players and the uh, innovator, so how are we looking at this market in terms of, you know, the 150 crore guidance that you give? How competitive it is going to get in next 12, 16 months? And how are we differentiating ourselves? Or how are we presenting? Because out of the other competitors, we are the only company who is not an active company. <laughs> See, I, again, I tell you, uh, if you want to start a business, 
and somebody comes and tells you that you have an opportunity to launch a product where the market size is almost 3,000 crores and there'll be only two or three suppliers. Would you like to start a business in that manner or would you like to start a business where uh, you have 30 competitors and you're competing with for the same size? I think this is probably the best possible position that you could start from. I know we are not an established player, but we have a reasonable network we have built over the last two years. We did a lot of hard work building infrastructure, building uh, uh, you know, uh, the sales force and the manufacturing capability. And we have a very good quality product. And, um, and we're getting good traction. And I think I, I'm giving uh, uh, this guidance after you know, going into the market. And I think we should do well. And uh, this is probably the best possible scenario that you could enter the market. And uh, then, then you're asking me a chicken and egg question. No? So when, so, you know, when, when do you, then if you say that then you are not a player in this business, then you can never enter that business then, right? So I think this is probably the best scenario that you could enter. I think that's the way I can put it. And uh, this sort of limited competition doesn't happen all the time. And I think we're setting ourselves up for that. And I think that's what we specialize on. When we enter a market, we don't try to be the, uh, we're always like the only show in town or you're the only one or two shows in town. So that your, your chances of your success are much higher compared to a situation where you are dealing with 40 or 50 competitors. This is probably the best chance for us to do well because of the limited amount of competition. And, and I think we'll, and there is, the market is big enough also. No? See, 3,000 crores, I'm actually saying not even 10% market share. We're not asking for beyond that, isn't it? We're not going and saying that we want more than that. So it's a very conservative estimate, and I, I don't think it will be hard to meet. Okay? It is. Uh, no, I think I think I came across a uh, little wrong in that sense. So no, I'm not saying that this is a bad way to enter the market. In fact, this is a very good way to enter the market, and CTPR has been a very good uh, launch. What I meant to ask was, ki, we are the we out of the players which are there in CTPR, we are the only players who is not an AdChem company. So if you could just you know share your uh, thoughts, your 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 way of how you have entered the market, you know what kind of regions you have tapped in, uh, the 150 crore guidance that you gave. Out of that, how much will be the B2B part and how much will be the B2C part that you will do? And next, say, next I, I year. How much of that will still change between B2B to B2C? That's what I wanted yeah. to understand. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I've already answered the question, kind of missed it. I think 65 to 70% we're expecting from B2C and about 25 to 30% we're expecting from uh, B2, uh, B2, B2B, 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 yeah. Principal to principal. Got it. And in terms of differentiating, uh, is it solely based on price or is it also based on the combinations that we, we can offer in CTPR? It's a combination. See, again, you mentioned uh, other competitors. I think the other competitors have not launched all the combinations. Some I've launched all the combinations. They have launched only one or two of the combinations. They have not launched all the combinations. So that way there's a differentiation between us and them, right? So it is, doesn't mean just because another competitor has come, doesn't mean that he'll offer the whole portfolio, that he'll be able to supply that particular market on time. Doesn't mean that, you know, he has a full basket. We could be focusing on someone else. And why, and always traders play one against the other, right? So I think there's enough market for everyone. I think the market is good enough for everyone. I think it's large enough for everyone. And I think you can you can make your mark. And this is it. That, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Kindly proceed. Thanks, Rajiv. Uh, Rajiv, on, uh, I think you asked this question partially before, but how should we look at the subsidiaries uh, you know, incrementally now going forward? Uh, are the subsidy businesses, again, largely dependent on uh, how development scales up in these businesses, or are there more, than, uh, more products which can meaningfully scale these businesses? I think we have a lot of launches in both the subs. I think Brazil has about five, six launches uh, in the next 12 months. Canada also has some very good launches coming up in the next few months. We are trying to diversify the portfolio and we have a lot of filings and we're doing litigation in these markets. So I think the idea is to build a more diversified model. I, I'm not concerned about a drop in price on one of the products uh, affecting the profitability because we have a fairly diversified portfolio. Yeah. And secondly, on the newer filings on, on, in the U.S. that you've done, by when do you uh, think you will get clarity from the FDA in terms of your first of all status on some of these products? In the next few months. Hopefully in the next few months. Next two, three months. 
and how many uh, pr 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 uh, in numbers of products that you are banking on could be meaningful for you uh, that you've done five I, I think I have two products uh, two to three products we will know whether we are FTF shortly with all three are filed Nathan what I'm saying I have filed all three but we just don't know what the FTF status is so we will know shortly okay thank you thank you participants if you wish to ask a question kindly press star one the next question is from the line of Mr. Chaudhary, a farmer. Kindly proceed. Hello, Rajiv. <coughs> Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, I'm a farmer and as well as an investor. Uh, first question is about uh, CTPR. Um, yeah, I understood from the market that you are only offering small packs uh, uh, up to 150 ml, whereas uh, I am from Bellary area, where the farmers um, uh, do buy a lot of uh, large packs, uh, 600 ml of Corrigan, okay? Uh, that's one thing. And second, uh, I also understand. Hello? Which territory are you from? I'm sorry, which state? Hello? Which, which state are you from, I'm saying? Which state? <clears throat> Bellary, Karnataka. Karnataka. Okay. I was inquiring with your people in Nanantapur. Um, they told me that uh, they are uh, essentially giving out, I mean the largest packs are about 150 ml, okay, whereas uh, the demand is quite strong uh, for 600 ml uh, packets in, uh, packs in uh, cotton belt, which I think would be your primary uh, consumer, okay. Just one moment, and, uh, I'll, just, I'll get Rajesh to answer that question. Rajesh, can you answer uh, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, so yeah. uh, till today we have launched the, the 10 ml, 30 ml, 60 and 150. We are also offering the 300 and 600. It's just uh, on its way. Okay. So and I also heard that you people don't have a network in uh, Karnataka as of now. Is your network limited to only Andhra and Telangana as of now? No. I think the last quarter has been focused on building the team. So we do have some uh, people who have started very recently. We are expanding. So the goal is in the next uh, one, two months, we'll have the full team in place in Karnataka. Actually, you plan to cover the entire cotton belt, uh, Maharashtra and uh, Madhya Pradesh and South? So we are covering everything. So we, we are covering all the states. Karnataka especially, our team is just getting on board. Okay. With regard to the other part, B2B, <coughs> I noticed that, you know, the other uh, one big player like UPL has grown mainly in B2B business uh, because um, uh, technical competency. Okay. And... Uh, NACO is a uh, new entrant in, um, um, uh, you know, uh, agribusiness, uh, but has a tremendous amount of uh, technical competencies. Couldn't you think in terms of, uh, you know, expanding your uh, business by building uh, a large B2B portfolio and also utilize that to service your uh, area, uh, chosen area within India? Yes, sir. I think the idea is that only. I think uh, idea is that about 60 to 65 percent we want to do on our own P2 uh, direct customer. About 35 percent, 30 to 35 percent we're targeting on uh, B2B as well. We have lined yeah, up quite a few customers. Think. I think about five six customers we already lined up. Uh, so we will get sale from both. I think the guidance that we gave of 150 crores in this business is based on the assumption that these customers are already onboarded. So I think we're fairly confident because we already have onboarded these customers. Yeah, but that is limited to only CTPR. I was talking about introducing other products which are complex, where the APAs are probably imported, or you know, uh, the same to uh, Mr. Chaudhary, uh, so we, this is just a start. This is the first product we have launched. This is the first real product we have launched, and has made a lot of bank. But we have a pipeline going forward the next five, six years. Uh, we have a steady pipeline every year, and... Uh, but this is the most important product in the pipeline. I think that's why this is uh, just getting more attention. But yes, we have a steady pipeline and we're hoping to build a large business, not only directly to the customer, but also to third party. We are very uh, you know, cognizantly working on that. Absolutely correct. Uh, could you give some color on uh, your Brazil subsidiary performance? Brazil subsidiary, you said? Okay, just one. Yeah. Give me one moment. Okay. <coughs> Brazil subsidiary last quarter did 38 crores of revenue. Okay, that's great. Okay, right. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of N.K. Arora, an individual investor. Can you proceed? Good morning, Rajiv. Yeah, Mr. Arora, tell, tell me, please, go ahead. Uh, all the people, all the companies which have launched generic revenue in USA, they have volume restrictions. So does that mean there is no incentive for prices of them by anybody to anyone? Um, I think, uh, you know, Teva markets the product, Mr. Arora. So there is erosion in the pro uh, price, there is no question on erosion. Uh, um, so I think the product should do well. I think there is enough money to be made uh, on the product. Yeah. And second is, sir, as we have discussed in the previous phone call, our volume share is in mid single digits. And uh -huh. <coughs> from 7th March onwards, it will be in double digits. So we'll have a significant increase in profit every year as our volume rises. I think so, sir. That's our expectation. That's correct, sir. Yes, absolutely correct. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Next caller, please. Thank you. So this will be my last question, yeah? Okay. Thank you. Participants, if you have a question, can you press star one? Is that on? Okay. So the next question is from the line of Nikhil from SIMPL. Yeah, yeah Nikhil, go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Just one question. Uh, on the Revlimid case, uh, if you can just uh, educate us what is the thing and how do you think? Uh, so can it blow out in a large way or what's your, your understanding? I think Teva is handling the case, my friend. Uh, so Teva is the end day holder. Uh, so they're handling the case. At this time, it will be very premature to say anything. Uh, so I, there's nothing I can comment at this time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you won't be able to comment that even if, so I'm just trying to understand that if it goes adverse, uh, because the profit share is between three players, uh, whatever the uh, the penal actions or whatever the payments have to be done, all the three will have to do, or how how will it evolve? I'm like. Uh, I just have a comment. I think uh, we we are confident about our position. I, I and uh, at this time I can't say anything beyond. That. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you all. Uh, again, any questions related to what was discussed during uh, today's call, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be more than happy to address those. Thank you all and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Noama Wealth, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.